All right, there's a few different ways to do these gun belt cartridge loops. Uh, this is the weaving method where you basically just punch a series of oblong hole punches and then weave a three quarter inch strap through and you wet mold the strap so it holds tight. That's not the one we're gonna be doing today. This is the stitching method where you basically just lay the strap on top of the gun belt and uh, stitch it through. But the hardest part about doing these is getting the spacing right. But I made a guide here that you can download that gives you the spacing for both the points that you'll mark on the belt as well as the distance in each stitch on the strap. And I did it for 22 long rifle mag, 38 special, 357 mag, 45 Colt and 44 mag. Uh, those are definitely some of the most popular ones, but in case you need to uh, figure it out for a different round, I'm gonna show you how to measure that out. So I'm gonna take the cartridge, lay it down on the base, and wrap the strap around the cartridge. And this is gonna give you the distance uh, between the stitches on the strap. So you can take a couple of straight edges. I saw someone on YouTube doing this. I wish I could remember his name for a little shout out. But yeah, it's pretty handy. You can just use like two rulers like this and push it together to get the distance between the two stitches on the strap. It's basically the same as the marks I already made on this strap based on my template. Should be about an inch and one eighth apart. Uh, for 45 Colt. I'm gonna take my calipers and get a measurement for the base down here. Basically the distance between the two rulers should be where your marks are made on the belt. And it should be about 5 eighths of an inch. And yep, it's consistent with the template. So you should be able to do that with any round, any cartridge, and make your own template or uh, whip up a custom belt for somebody pretty easily. But I'm hoping this template will simplify things for you a bit, take a lot of the guesswork out of it. As long as you're using three to four ounce leather for the strap that you're stitching down, then these measurements should be pretty accurate. So you should be able to download this guide from our website and then print it out on a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And then you might wanna use this guide to make your own templates, uh, depending on how many loops you plan on sticking with or how wide your strap is. But if not, you should be able to just lay it down on the belt wherever you want the loops to go. And then taking a scratch all and just making the marks on each point. So basically start here, come down, turn the belt around, pull that strap out of the way, make the diagonal stitch to the next one, lay it down, and then uh, make that vertical stitch and then repeat that thing for as many loops as you want on your belt. Keep in mind there's just an arbitrary amount of uh, loops here included. That's why I put these arrows on the end just to let you know you can you know, continue it on and make as many as you'd like. Um, I was kind of limited to the size of paper so I just made it to the end and you can decide how many loops you want to do. I typically do 18 loops for the bigger calibers like um, 45 Colt and 38 Special. But for 22, I do 24 rounds. Uh, I think it makes sense to do a number that's divisible by six though. If you're making a gun belt for a, you know, a six gun, it's pretty appropriate. Because then you know you've got either three or four rounds. You, know, you can fill that cylinder up at least three or four times an even amount and it'll make sense. But you know, the 22 long rifle is so much smaller that if you only did 18 it would only come to about here it'd be a really small um you know stretch of loops so i did 24 it just fills the empty space a little bit more um but you could also just go the full length of the belt if you wanted a lot of the hollywood style holsters um actually wrap around like the mexican loop ones they'll wrap around and lay over the um ammo loops so just depends what you want to do, get creative, but I'm hoping that this guide should make things pretty easy for you. So this is what a belt looks like with 45 Colt. Loops are quite a bit bigger. And then you got these ones which are 38 Special, just a hair smaller than the 45. And then you got the 22 Long Rifle or 22 Mag, much, much smaller. These ones are the hardest ones to sew in my opinion because it's such a small space. It's really hard to get the stitches in there, but with enough practice, you can make it happen. 45 Colt's definitely the easiest. If you're gonna just practice on one, I would start with 45 Colt. All right, I've got a belt here that's already been marked from the template. I'm gonna do 18 holes. And then I've got a strap here that's in three to four ounce leather. 
and I made the marks for 18 holes, which is convenient because then you know exactly where the strap's going to end up. As long as you're sewing on the lines each time and keeping your spacing right, then you should end up perfectly with the right length of strap. So I usually buy two different sizes of the same leather. I usually buy hides that are eight to nine ounce for the belt. And then I buy another hide that's three to four ounces uh, that I can just cut out for dedicated straps. If I was going to just buy one side of leather to accomplish this, I would probably buy something like four to five ounces so that I could double up the belt and have a eight to nine to 10 ounce uh, belt, you know, stitched together. But then you can use just a single layer of that same leather for the strap part of it and it should work out pretty well. All right, so I'm just gonna take this over to the sewing machine. I'm not gonna use any adhesive or anything. I'm just gonna lay it down and line up the lines that I made on my strap with the two dots. Just lay that strap right in between that series of dots and uh, start stitching. All right, I'm gonna take these two pieces and head over to the machine. All right, I clamped up the all the excess strap that's hanging up just so it makes it a little bit easier to turn it around and deal with this thing. Instead of starting at the top and going down, I'm going to start on the bottom hole, do a reverse stitch up to the first one, and then back down. So we're only going over it twice. I'm using size 207 bonded nylon thread with a size 25 needle. I actually prefer 23, but I was really struggling with some tension issues, so I decided to bump it up to 25 and just see how things go. And I kind of got it dialed in, so I'm just going to leave it. All right, machine is in reverse. You can just start cruising. I like to try and get about four stitches uh, across the strap. So for me, that's about six stitches per inch. Alright, so now I'm going to turn the whole belt this way, pull that strap clear out of the way, and start my diagonal stitch to the next little mark. Got to get over that uh, strap right there. It doesn't totally lay flush, so you just got to kind of keep it under control while it rides over that hill. And I usually get about five stitches going diagonal. The nice thing about um, this Cobra machine and the, you know, having the brushless servo motor and the speed reducer, you can go so slow, um, which is really helpful to avoid mistakes on something like this. You don't want to ruin a whole belt over one weird little mistake. So I just lined the strap back up and I'm gonna sew down the line that I marked every one and one eighth of an inch. All right, so this is a really important tip to know when you're doing this kind of stitching. So normally when you try and make a really sharp turn on a stitch, it can be hazardous because if you um, do it before the needle is able to go all the way down 
and let the hook pick up the thread before it comes back up. If you do it before that, then you you could potentially skip a stitch and it'll just turn into a big mess. So when you get to the end of your stitch and you're about to make a really sharp angle, you wanna take the needle all the way down and then bring it up just till about where that um, hole at the base of the needle bar lines up with this little line right here. Or if you really wanna get technical, you can take the cover plate off and watch the hook grab the thread and get a feel for you know when it actually happens. But um, you just wanna make sure that it's grabbing that every single time and you'll get kind of in a good habit of timing that when you're doing a lot of these. All the way down and then up just about half an inch. The thicker leather you decide to use for these, the harder it is to sew this. Um, so I found a happy medium right at about three to four ounces in leather. Anything thinner and I think it'll feel a little bit too flimsy and weak and would probably stretch too much. One thing you always got to be careful of when you're working on a machine is the oil getting on the leather. Last stitch. I'm gonna go all the way back up that stitch to really lock it in. But I don't like ending a stitch on an edge where it could flare out and make it come loose. So I'm actually going to take it down one more back right there. go there's the back side little zigzag pattern and the front side and if you decide to line your leather then this will all be covered up so if you had tension issues or something that'll be hidden up but um, we're just gonna keep our single layer to try and keep the overall price of our rigs down affordable but I think it looks great all right so we can take a couple 45 rounds and show you we got a nice snug fit as long as you're sewing on the actual marks that you made, it should all be pretty consistent and just turn out really nice. And we got the 38 Special. And the 22. Don't be too discouraged if you try this out and it turns out horribly. I had to practice this stitch so many times to finally get comfortable with it. So if it's frustrating, just keep at it. Get through a lot of scraps before you get onto something that you are actually hoping to keep. All right, well that's it. I'm gonna go stamp the rest of these belts and make about 15 more of these. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.